Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan, the tutor. Today we're gonna to be covering question one from the graded assignment for Physics 202 at the University of Delaware, spring 2023. This is not gonna be the exact question, this is gonna be one just like it, and you can use it to guide your thinking for the actual question. So let's say I have two charges, one here and one here. We'll call the first one Q1 and we'll call the second one Q2. And let's say I know the force of Q1 on Q2, and let's say it points up and to the left, and we'll call that force F12, because it's the force of charge one on object two. We'll also say that Q1 has the same charge as Q2, and they're both positive Q. Q doesn't matter, it's a variable, it can be any number you want it to be, it doesn't matter. Now my first question would be, what is the force F2 on one? Can we draw that vector? So just so you know, this is really a physics one question, because what this is saying is if you have a force F12 going up and to the left, there must be an equal and opposite force going down and to the right acting on Q1. This is known as Newton's third law. And for the record, it doesn't even matter that they have the same charge. They could even have different charges and this would still apply because Newton's third law says that every force has an equal opposite reaction force. Force 1, 2 and force 2, 1 are those forces. They are equal. So that means if F12 goes up 2 and left 2, that means F21, I can immediately say, goes right 2 and down 2. So that's it for my first question. My second question is, let's say I want to add a third charge, Q3. And when I add Q3, I want the force from charge 3 on object 1 to have an X component of 0, a Y component of negative F, so down, and a Z component of zero. Where should I place Q3 in order to create that? I will also say that Q3 has charge positive Q, just like charges one and charge two. So first of all, we need to decide where to put charge three. And also I wanna consider only charge one and charge three. What I'm saying is let's ignore charge two for a second. So let's get a new coordinate axis. Again, here's Q1. I want the force to point downward and I don't know exactly how long this vector is. Like for instance, it can be shorter, it can be longer. I don't know the exact length yet, but when I say negative F, and I forgot to mention this, that force one, two and force two, one both have magnitude F. So in other words, I want a force equal to force one, two or force two, one because they're the same. So all I know is that the force will point down and have magnitude F. And if I think about it, the only way that two positive charges can cause Q1 to move down in this direction is if Q3 is repelling Q1. So what I'm saying is if I put Q3 down here, let's say, this is wrong, this doesn't make any sense because if they're both positive charges, they're going to want to repel. So for that reason, I know Q3 is somewhere above Q1. I don't know exactly where yet, but that's the first part of the problem. So in order to find the actual distance, I need to set up my Coulomb's force equation. Remember that Coulomb's force says that the force between charges is equal to K times Q1 times Q2 over R squared. And what I'm gonna propose is that first we find the force of two on one, and then we'll set it equal to the force of three on one. And the reason I'm saying that is because force two, one, I said was F, and force three, one, back when I said I went zero, negative F comma zero, Forget the negative sign for a second, it's gonna have a magnitude of F, so they're gonna equal each other, that much we know. So first let's find F21. That's gonna be force equals K Q1, which we can actually just call positive Q, because that's what I said the value was. Q2 is also positive Q, divided by some radius squared. And I'm gonna call this radius, radius 2, 1, because it's the distance between two and one. Then for force three, one, that is equal to, again, K, Q times Q, because again, both charges are positive Q, divided by radius three, one, the distance between charges three and one, and that squared. And since we said these were all equal, I'm going to set both of these equal to each other. I'm going to say K, Q, Q over R two, one squared equals K, Q, Q over R three, one squared. The nice thing here is that the Ks cancel and both Qs cancel. However, the radiuses don't cancel because they're different symbols. But what I'm left with is one over R2, one squared equals one over R3, one squared. And now it's just an algebra problem. 
So first I would take the reciprocal of both sides. That means r2 1 squared equals r3 1 squared. Take the square root and you get that radius 2 1 is equal to radius 3 1. What this means in English is that the distance between q1 and q2 is the same as the distance between q1 and q3. So now all we need to do is find the distance between q1 and q3. So looking back at my original picture, here's the distance r2 1. It looks like it's 2 to the left and 2 up. And if I want to find the total distance, I just need to use Pythagorean theorem. So 2 squared plus 2 squared equals c squared. That's going to be 4 plus 4, so 8. 8 equals c squared. And that means the distance, r2, 1, the distance between 1 and 2, is going to be the square root of 8, which as a decimal is about 2.8. So that means the distance between 1 and 3 is also going to be 2.8. Now I know that's not on the grid, but that's okay. Here's 1, here's 2. About here is 2.8. So that's where Q3 is going to go. And keep in mind, your problem on the graded assignment, Q1 and Q2 are not this distance away, but you will need Pythagorean theorem to find the total distance. And let's say I wanted to draw the force vector from 3 onto 1. In other words, what's the length of F? The answer is going to be the same length as whatever this force was. And again, it's the same length because they were equal to each other. Now, if I zoom in on this vector, it looks like, once again, it's 2 to the left and 2 up. So it's the exact same dimensions as before. This vector f is also going to be root 8 or 2.8. And so that's how long I need to make this vector over here. It needs to be 2.8 coordinate grids south. So about there. Okay. And now let's just do one more. Again, here's my coordinate grid with q1 at the center. Now I want to know... Where should I add charge Q4, where Q4 is equal to negative 2Q? And I want the force from charge 4 on charge 1 to equal 2F in the X direction, 0 in the Y direction, and 0 in the Z direction. So first, again, I'm going to ask myself, where should Q4 be placed? And since I know this is a positive X hat direction, it means it's going to the right. And I know that Q1 has charge positive Q and Q4 is going to have a negative charge. These are opposite charges. So in other words, the only way I'm going to get a vector pointing 2F to the right is if I put Q4 somewhere on the right as well. And that's because the opposite charges are going to attract. Now, once again, I don't know the exact distance yet. I don't know the exact length of my 2F vector here. But I do know the picture will generally look something like this. Now, once again, I'm going to set the force of 2 on 1 equal to the force of 4 on 1. Well, actually, that's not true because we said force 2, 1 was just F, and we're saying the force of charge 4 on 1 is actually 2F. So in order to balance these equations, I need to multiply the left one by 2 to have it balance. And remember how we said earlier that this F is equal to KQQ Q over R2, 1 squared? So then multiplying that by 2, I'm going to get 2kqq over r21 squared. And remember that we said r21 is equal to the square root of 8, so that helps us as well. Now for the right side, force 4 on 1 is going to equal k times q1, which is positive q, times q2, which is negative 2q. Remember that we said charge 4 is negative 2q. Also for Coulomb's law equation, I'm not even going to worry about the negative signs ever. Because what the negative signs tell me is the direction, and I already know the direction, so including it now would just confuse me. So yes, I always make my charges positive in Coulomb's law. And then that's divided by the radius between 4 and 1, and that's squared. And once again, I can set these two equal to each other. So that means I get 2kqq over root 8 squared is equal to kq times 2q over radius 4, 1 squared. And so if I look at what cancels, looks like K cancels, looks like that Q cancels, looks like that Q cancels. The 2 does not cancel, but the Q does cancel. And actually, you could even make the argument that this 2 cancels with that 2 because they're both in the numerator. And now I'm just left with 1 over the square root of 8 squared is equal to 1 over R4, 1 squared. 
Again, I would take the reciprocal of both sides. Square root of 8 squared equals r41 squared. In case you're curious, the square root of 8 squared is just 8. But then I need to take the square root anyway, so I'm back to root 8. So it looks like r41 is the same distance as everything else we've seen today. So in other words, it looks like charge 4, q4, is going to be 2.8 to the right of q1. So going back to my picture, I need to draw q4 2.8 to the right. That's about there. There's my q4. Let me move q1 over so it's less confusing. There, that's better. And then if I want to find how long to draw the vector for q1, notice that the force is 2f, and f was equal to the square root of 8, which is about 2.8. So that means 2f, just double it, it must be around 5.6 units long. So that arrow is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Point six, about there. And no, it doesn't matter that it goes through my dot, my Q4 charge. Now keep in mind when you're doing this actual homework, the numbers they use for the charges Q3 and Q4 will actually have them be perfectly on the coordinate grid, but your arrows for force three on one and force four on one will not be a perfect number. It will be a decimal. So that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you all for watching. If you have any comments, please post them below. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.